guys uh, and welcome back to my channel um this is the second part of a two-part interview i am having with um wilfred ratigan um for those of you who had not seen the first um half of the interview i would like you to go back and look at it it's right on the channel and it's third in line from top yes um Actually, the full interview had actually been done um, at the same time, and Mr. Ratigan was kind enough to spend a full hour with me. However, I put out the first half uh, of 30 minutes in the first half, and the second half of the interview got messed up due to some technical reasons. And Mr. Ratigan has been humble enough and kind enough to come back and do the second half do over the second half with me um before i get into the interview proper though i think i need to say this um them say you know you must give a man him flowers before him die put him flowers in him hand while him can live and appreciate it and look on the flowers that you're giving him and i'm gonna give mr ratigan his flowers now because this is a gen gentleman who he can get an interview on any network in the united states or canada or britain and yet, he has taken the time out to give a little YouTuber like me an interview who don't, don't even have 10,000 sub subscribers. So, um, this speaks a lot to the caliber of the person that he is not afraid to... He is quite comfortable speaking and mixing with a small man. And that speaks to the level of humility of this gen gentleman. And I, Sir Ratigan, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for coming by again. And um, let's go, go into it. Let's re recap a bit also. In the first half, uh, I think the last thing we had um, spoken about in the, uh, that was um, in the last video, you was on the matter of... Um, the level of support that you could have leveraged, the level of support that you could have leveraged from international people who cared about you and who respected you enough to um, come on board with you and spend of their own time, give up even their very families and to just come and um, temporarily, of course, I don't mean they gonna everybody gonna send out the voice papers but they were prepared to uproot their lives to come down here to support you if you had had a position to assist the jamaican people and that says a lot about you if you were able to get people to do that so and i think um in that last interview also it was said you said that well the commissioner's office job is not one that you would be further interested in but you would be interested now in having uh if you could get um some kind of uh um oh <laughs> consultancy consultancy that's the word sir thank you very much now we we can go on i i love what you were saying about um what you could do so we can take it up from there. I love all to right. hear what you have to offer. Well, well, first of all, let me thank you, my brother, for having me on. And I also thank you for your kind words. Um, they really mean a lot to me. But um, I'd like your listening audience to know that I have never forgotten where I came from. And I will never forget where I came from. And so whatever humility that you find in me it's coming from a deep and abiding place it's coming from whence i came and so i i you know uh i can never ever say no to somebody like you and i regard you in the same manner as i would mainstream media um whether it's a TV station, radio station, whatever. So just keep in mind that I'm always at your service. And if I tell you no, it means that it's not humanly possible for me. 
Otherwise, I will do it. I'm at your service. Now, getting back to our last interview, um, as far as people, international people trying to provide assistance or to help with my desire to, 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 to quell the violence and the crime in Jamaica. I had people lined up from several countries and people that, including people that I worked with, um, worked with within my former agency and other uh, intelligence slash law enforcement agencies uh, from different parts of the world. And they were willing to, as you said, temporarily come to Jamaica. Um, I, I can think of a few people, uh, including one gentleman who told me that even though he had young children and I told him I would need him for about six months, he said, it didn't matter. He said, I will stay as long as you want me to so that we can just deal with this problem because, yeah. and he had done some research on Jamaica and he realized that there's a serious crime problem. And these people are serious crime fighters and they love a challenge. So this was nothing for them. And to this day, I still have people that if I say to them, listen, uh, you know, there's a chance for us to go back and do some good things for Jamaica that they would not hesitate uh, to pack up and, 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 and go to Jamaica uh, for that express purpose of dealing with the crime problem. These people are not looking for a vacation. You know, um, and I can tell you this based on my experience with them. These people are dedicated, experienced, talented crime fighters. And like I said, they love a challenge. Wow. And they have addressed challenges all over the world. And so this is just another one. But the fact that they know me, they love me, they respect me. They said, look, we will come and we will deal with this for you. So that's what... I was planning to do. It didn't happen. And God knows why. You know, he knows best, I should say. But if given the chance to have these people come back, um, some of them, they're still around. And uh, the, meaning that they're not committed to a nine to five. You know, they're doing consultancies here, there and everywhere. Some of them are fully retired, but they've said to me, look, if, if there's a need, fine, just give me a call and uh, we'll go. So that's that's where we are, and and it the the experience covers the entire gamut. It covers uh, fugitive apprehension. It covers counterterrorism. It counters the in, um, intelligence as well as counterintelligence. Um, it covers public corruption, white collar fraud, the whole thing, violent crime. I mean, these are people with tremendous experience. And so, <laughs> wow. if they should call me, I, I'll reach out to the, these folks and we'll make the trip. It's not a problem. You are a patriot, sir. You are a patriot. And boy, that is, is such, such a blessing. We don't know what we have. Um, that sounds great. Right. And you know, the thing is, I, I'm not doing this uh, it's been said, you know, some people have made the accusation that I'm out there for self-aggrandizement and um, that couldn't be further from the truth. And in fact, people have said to me, don't even address that. But to some degree, you have to address it and let people know that this is not about me. I don't care who gets the credit. I just want the job done. That's all. Yes. You know, yeah. I don't care about the credit because there's so many people here in the diaspora who want to go back to Jamaica, to spend the remaining years of their lives there. There are people here who are looking forward to dying in Jamaica and being buried in Jamaica. And instead, they, they've they gone to other parts of the world. You know, I know quite a few people who retired in South Africa, Jamaicans. And when I asked them, they said, but that place is a farm on. Why, why not choose? Yes, and I said, well, I, as bad as things are in South Africa, better than Jamaica. <laughs> and that's, and believe me, things are the crime, the crime situation in South Africa is bad. It's bad. So when the people tell you that they'd rather deal with the crime situation in South Africa, retire there, than go back to Jamaica, says a lot. Says yes, a lot. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yes, it does. 
and help is out there. I mean, the, what, what I'm not understanding is help is out there. All you have to do is ask for help. You know, you're right. Help is out there. And so the question, the question is, well, why, why, why aren't the Jamaican officials accepting the help? <laughs> I, 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 I kind of have an idea, but I really don't want to say it here so, because I don't want you to talk yourself out of a job. <laughs> no, well, we'll just leave it. Well, well, here's the question. We'll just, here's the thing is, we'll just leave it at the question. Yeah, you know, we're just curious. Yeah, we're just question. curious as to why is it, yes. yeah, we'll just, we'll just say, we're curious as to why it hasn't happened. And, yes. and look, we are curious. maybe there's a good reason. Yeah, maybe there's a good reason, but we don't know. But, but we if, don't know. If, if the powers that be, if they do decide to say, if they do decide to have us come, and and in fact, I'll tell you what, we don't even need to do an assessment. Because yeah. I went back and I looked at some reports, um, uh, some reports commissioned back in the 1990s um, forward. I think from 1995 or thereabouts to 2017, I believe, or to present, there have been about no, no less than six or seven uh, commissioned assessments on the police force in Jamaica. So we wouldn't have to go back and say, oh, we want to come and do an assessment. The assessments are there. Yes. Yeah, because if you read, if you go back and you read the very first one, if you read the very first one, it's not much different from the last one. Things haven't changed that much. Things haven't changed that much. No, so that's we true. could hit the ground and, and just start running. We could hit the ground and start running. Easy, and and then the easy. other thing too that I, I didn't, I, the other thing that I need to mention is that some of these folks are Jamaicans. I mean, members of the team. They're okay. Jamaicans. They still have relatives living there. So they could land and start working right away. And they're they motivated by the fact. Yeah, and the fact that they uh, have a Jamaican connection, some of them, they would be uh, mo even more motivated to assist. Yes, yes. And I'm telling you, do you know one of the most disheartening thing, things is the fact that we have so much to give and we want to give and somehow we're, we're buffed, you know, we're, we're told, yes. you know, in no uncertain terms that now, nah, we, we, yeah. you know, that's the thing because it's, it's, it's almost criminal to have people with this much experience, right? This much knowledge, this much technical ability, to, these contacts, and then to just have them just wither away. When we're saying that, look, we have so much to give you that will benefit this country right. and we're not saying that we're not saying that we're we're the end all be all because anything we do we'll have to do it in concert with people on the ground in jamaica yeah. and as i said to you the last time and i'll say it again the jamaica constabulary force has a tremendous amount of talent in there a tremendous amount of experience a tremendous amount of will and desire to do the work that's necessary to deal with the crime problem but, they but you have to ask yourself yeah. the question mm -hmm. you have to ask yourself the question though mm -hmm. yes. is there is, is there enough will in the country meaning for yes. a leadership position to really tackle the problem is the is the will there yeah but and and so um the question to ask also you know is Whose interest does it serve to not fix the problem? Because, hold on. Today, the 30th of November, 2022, five December. murders. December. <laughs> five murders so far has happened today. That, that I know of. It could be seven, it could be eight, it could wow. be ten. And this is happening while... SOEs, you keep repeating the same um, overplayed SOEs every day and seeing that as the panacea and people are dying just as well and you don't decide to change. In whose interest is it to keep things as they are? That's just a question I think is just logical to ask. Well, let's, let's look at it like this. Let's let's unpack the question. Mm -hmm. Let's say that the the, the 
the, the people in charge of protecting and serving and reassuring the country that they they really want to do it. Let's say there's, you know, there is, there's, they're not distracted. There are no nefarious reasons for them not to do it. Let's just say that they really want to do it. Yes. Then the, that begs the question, are they talented enough to do what, what requires, what's required of them? Um, do they know what they're doing? Because like you said, you keep doing the same thing over and over and you keep getting the same results. I mean, the, 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 when 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 you hear the argument that oh SOEs are effective, especially this year, right? Because it's the most recent year. Ask yourself the question: Then, if it's so effective, how come we have more murders this year than last year? If it's so effective, <laughs> because people are being killed in areas. People people are being killed. People are being slaughtered where you have SOEs, yeah. and you know. Uh, it, it, it's funny because a few days there were a few days where you had no murders in Jamaica, but but and the government came out and said it. But what people should look at is they should look at it in context. In the context, they had um, in the context they had uh, World Cup going on, and you know how Jamaicans feel about football, yes. right? Especially when Brazil is playing. Amen. And nothing <laughs> moves, right. Yes. And, yeah, and then also you can look at you can look at you know the big sporting events where Jamaicans participate, in, like the World Games, or look at mm-hmm. the Olympics, right? The murder rate, and it, it, it and, and I mean this is not me making it up. It's it's there that the murder rate is significantly lower when you have these sporting events when Jamaicans participate. Um, so the fact that they had zero deaths, it's commendable. But then you have to look at the reasons why. And keep in mind that you don't have World Cup matches every day. Right. World Cup is over, and now you're seeing, you're seeing, you're seeing, you're seeing the true face of violence yes. in Jamaica. That, Trending upwards so again. That we don't care. You can put, yeah, you can put SOEs. You can do this. You can do that. We don't care. We're just gonna do whatever we need to do. You know and. And and the police and the soldiers, there is very little that they can do. In fact, I read something recently where they said that yes, the, the, the uh, law enforcement uh, uh, personnel are complaining about the SOEs because they're saying, "Look, this is ridiculous. It's it's not addressing the problem." And you keep calling for it, and we keep getting deployed, and and it, there is no look. Let me put it to you like this. Somebody said to me once, the only thing that SOEs will stop is traffic. <laughs> and I, I think I would agree. But oh, hold on, Mr. Rattigan. Do you realize that um, according to statistics, seven people of our murder statistics this year Seven were killed within 50 meters of an SOE checkpoint. Seven were killed within 50 meters of an SOE checkpoint. And then the government have these figures. The the government have these figures in front of them. And yet they say SOE is the reason. And the man just flying at them face with the killing. Same way, so. Well, look at at the... the, the, Look at not the SOE that they declared. I think at, uh, several weeks ago, the, the, this this last tranche of SOEs. Oh. Um, I think it was like I don't know four weeks or a month or so ago. The day after it was declared, they killed several people in St James. The <laughs> day after it was declared in St James, they killed several people. Not the day before, or not the day after. It's like they're sending a specific message. Say, look, why are you going with? That no matter we, we are do our thing. You do your thing. <laughs> My God, um, the more I speak to you, sir, the more I see the need for someone you, for you, or someone like you. Right. And the more they, yeah. as the days go by, the situation seems more dismal, and I don't know where we go from here. You know, you know. Let me let me let me point something out. I I was one of the you know the the, the many uh, Jamaicans criticizing the police for years, and it was 
very common to say, to point the accusing finger of blame at them and say they're corrupt and that's why we're in this position. But I happen to come across an organization called the Police Federation. And I had discussions with a lot of officials over there. And then I found out that I was sadly mistaken. I had to apologize to them. Because the JCF, as I said before, they have some highly talented, honest, I mean, uh, uh, credible people over there. Yes, you do have your bad apples. But I realized that the reason why, some of the reasons why they, they're just not able to get the job done is because they don't have available resources. So, and I'll repeat it. I think I mentioned it in the first interview, but mm -hmm. I'll repeat it. They don't have enough bulletproof vests, um, helmets, body cams, mm -hmm. even stationary. Um, uh, weapons, cars, um, uh, 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 pepper spray, collapsible right. batons. Uh, they, they, they don't even... <laughs> they, they're not properly... They're not, they're not, they're not even earning a, a living wage, you know what I mean? Because uh, they're making the equivalent of 400 and I think sixty dollars a US dollars a month. Yeah, well, <laughs> and then mm, okay, go ahead. to make it worse. To make it worse. To make it worse. They don't have a crime plan. They don't have a roadmap to success. They don't have a they don't have a document that says, okay, we're going to cut crime by ten percent in this area. Uh, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. They don't have such a document. And so they're stymied by their own organization. By true, their own ministry, true. by their own government. Exactly. So, now that you mentioned, but, but, but let, so me, let, me, the, let me say this before you even go any further. Please. You know that um, I refill toners, and I can say this now I, re, I refill toner cartridges and sell new ones. Yeah. And sometimes the police in Halfway Tree, we can call Halfway Tree Police Station, I can call Elliston Road Police Station and Denham Town and when they're out of toner it's me them come to when they don't get any from the government and I'll supply them sometimes at a discount See? I'll just fill and say go back to your offices and go get your get the job done because of my love right. for the police but Jamaican police and a whole are demotivated it's not lack of talent yeah. I think it's lack of motivation more, yes. more than even and the, equipment the, and you know that that comes from the fact that they don't have leadership because you see in jamaica we tend to think that leadership is positional because you sit in a particular chair you're a leader and that couldn't be further from the truth right as evidenced by what we're seeing now you know what we're seeing now what we're seeing we're seeing people in positions of authority act as managers and poorly as well they're performing they're performing very very poorly these people are it's it, it's difficult and i'm talking about people at the top and if you speak to if you speak to the people over at the police federation they'll tell you the same thing they're saying that we don't have leaders we don't we don't have people who can who can inspire us people who who can get us on a track of not even being motivated but being disciplined about our approach to crime yeah. we don't have it you know and and and, and, and it should be it and I hearken I hearken back to my days with the FBI where they didn't have to you didn't they did you didn't have you didn't need a leader to discipline and motivate you every single day because that was drilled into you that was drilled into you that listen one of the things that they stress is being a self-starter right so you're like you don't need somebody to get up and tell you every day what you need to do you should be motivated by the job itself and your dedication to the job cool. and, 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 and and to serve people that you get up and you go you get things done and and in Jamaica uh, sad to say but that's not there they need no they need new blood at the top they really do because the men and women there uh, uh, they're struggling and 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 as you said, and I and, and rightly so, they're demotivated. And so all you're gonna get from them is just the bare minimum. Yes. You see the That's people too. You see the people in the khaki clothes, the gazetted ranks, 
is like as if once you reach the a gazetted rank of, of assistant superintendent, you, you, it becomes like just a, a figurehead position. You just stay there and wait on your pension. So the, 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 even the, the gazetted rank themselves, as far as I'm concerned, are not motivated to even drive those um, who are their um, subordinates. You see, so that's another issue again. Well, the problem is further compounded by the recruitment of people with advanced degrees, right? They, they don't know anything about police work, but they, they take them in and they make them assistant superintendents and they put them in charge of people who have been corporals for 15 years, 20 years. And they, they put them there and tell them, okay, you are the boss over these people. And they don't know even where to find a bathroom. I mean, I was told a story about one of these people who who, who came in, you know, into the organization sideways by the fact that they had an, an, an advanced de degree and there mm -hmm. was a, a, an operation. And when when shots start fired, the man the man take call, I'm not, him, him just start shiver. I'm not know what to do. Him start ask what me to know, right? Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> and so it's it's it, it, it you know. Uh, one time I was I, I sat down and this was without much thought just based on my observation and mm. I came up with about 41 things that they could do to improve wow. the fourth wow just for, for and I without even without like I said without doing any research I just sat down and said based on the things that I've seen here are some of the things that they should do one of the things that they do in the FBI is every agent has a file review every 90 days every street agent has a file review every 90 days wow right so every 90 days you have to pack up your files and you have to go in and see, see your supervisor and then what he'll do is he'll go through every file with you and then he'll say he'll give you directions and guidance and then he'll say okay i'll see see you 90 days from now well guess what 90 days from now when you see him you better make sure that the things that he told you to do that they're done because if you're not done you're going to have some problems oh uh, that's also, good so you you have yeah. a point to work with. You, you, you have a standard that you have to maintain. And you exactly. have a target to meet. Now that exactly. is how I think police work should should go. Yeah. That sounds because great. Because what happens is that because what happens is that this 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 supervisor, he he has he has announced to his superiors that look for my squad, this is what I will be doing for the next 12 months. And then, you know, that drips down to you, the street agent. So yes. he's like, he's looking at you and he's like, you, you need to get this done. So, you know, three months from, three months after your your your, the, your first uh, your first file review, then he's going to see you again and he's going to go over that. He, he has a copy of that, of, of those instructions that he gave you three months ago and he's going to go over it with you. And if, if, if you didn't do the things that you're supposed to do, yeah, you're going to have to have a good reason. Furthermore, furthermore, if you couldn't do them and you realize that like a month or so before, you should have gone to him and said, hey, Mr. Supervisor, Madam Supervisor, look, I know I said I was going to get this done and we agreed on this, but here are some of the challenges I'm facing. I don't think I'm going to get it done so you need to give mm -hmm. them advance notice you can't wait until the day when for your file review you go in there and say oh well you know yeah no that that's that's not gonna, <laughs> that's not gonna work it's not gonna work wow it's... we need some of that here's what i'm gonna ask you now if possible i would love to publish a set of those um um those things that you think could help and to see okay. if in the meantime they could adapt some of them. So I am going to collaborate with you and, and hopefully get a list and see if we can see. Sure. At least what, what, why I want to put it out there is that we are here to help. We are here to help. Right. Jamaica is, 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 is what we are about. So right. uh, I'm going to be doing, doing that in, in future and then we take sure. it from there. Yeah. So sure. um and you see the thing is mm -hmm. I you know like some people some people probably wouldn't share it because you know, the information is information and knowledge you know those things are you know considered power and so the, you know you hold on to it but I don't care that I, I could care less I want to get it out there and if some like I said to you 
if they use some of the things, they don't have to use all of them, but if they use some of the things that I that I that I'm gonna that I'm, I'm proposing, mm -hmm. if they use it and they can they can they can they can uh, realize some benefits from it, some achievement, some success. Mm -hmm. I'm happy for them. They don't even have to say they get it from me. True. Just, I'll put it out there. Just and let, go ahead and just let the do public be the judge. You know, right? Them can't say you know, never. One of the things too.